Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another small 10 by 7 inch transparent watercolor. This is an Eastern or Rufus sided Toei. I got photos of this guy in our backyard a couple of years ago and it finally made it to a painting. I usually think of Toei as being summertime birds, but we had one that would migrate early every year. And one year he got caught in a late snowstorm in like April late April and uh, at any rate I thought it would make a fun painting although he looked pretty miserable. Well, I started the painting by frisketing off the foreground elements the bird and the branches and then I went about washing in a little bluish purpley background to indicate some of the snow that we were going to be putting in. Most of this was done with a number six round brush the initial wash, I think, was done with a uh, little bit fatter brush. but And I changed the lighting in this. In my photo reference, I had a lot of um, kind of gray colors in the photo. And I wanted to push it a little more colorful. So I ended up using some purples, and I wanted to have a warm lighting. Um, so I put a little bit of kind of yellowy-orange tones into the bird and the branches and the snow. And part of that was, if it was all gray, it makes it look a little colder than I wanted it to look. I, I kind of wanted the bird to look uh, cold, but not as uh, like there was no hope of it ever warming up. So I injected some of those um, warm tones in the cool background to uh, not have it be quite as oppressive. You can see up in the corner there some of the, uh, the grays that dominated the original photo. So once I had the background kind of squared away, I peeled off the frisket, revealing the white of the paper, and then I transferred my sketch over using tracing paper. And then I went about putting in the lightest local colors for all the things with the number six round brush. And at this point, you can kind of charge in really quickly, which is fun, you can make progress pretty quickly especially with some of these dark areas. Since you're going dark, you can uh, you can move pretty quickly and then you can just push things darker as you go. Once I had the first layer of colors in, I was able to charge in with uh, some glazes, building some depth to the, the art. And I'd use similar tones in the uh, all the all the warm areas of the painting. I mean, my the Rufus sides, they have some of the similar colors to the branches in the background, and some of those I carried into the stump beneath the bird, so there was some unifying features. And the stump has some greens, which, you know, were shared with some of the lichen colors. And a lot of this painting was about controlling contrast. Uh, with the, I wanted it to be a high key painting where it was dominated by light tones, but I wanted to have the bird have the most pop off the page and then have that slowly fade off into the branches in the background, which have less detail and less contrast. So as I went, I, I had to be careful not to overdo the detail in some of those back areas and if I did put the detail in it's okay if it's you know somewhat sharp but as long as it doesn't have as much high contrast as my foreground elements like the bird and the stump that it's sitting on. At this point I switched over a number two round. It's a good detail brush. And I try to move around the page, not working on any one place for a terribly long period of time. I think there's a temptation to finish, you know, start with the beak or the eye and move your way across the page. And that works for some people. I find for myself that I'm better off kind of developing the page as a whole and then increasing my detail kind of all around. Otherwise, there's the temptation to kind of you start with dessert and you do your favorite parts and then you have less energy to finish all the other areas 
so some parts of it look a little neglected. Working this way kind of brings things together as a whole, and I think it also invites you to have better color harmony because you're using some of those colors from similar places. Well, this guy looks pretty puffed up, and uh, he was not entirely happy this day. It was awfully cold, and uh, I think he was rethinking his early migration. I think one advantage of that uh, early migration is that the birds, the, especially the males, get there early in the breeding season, and they can establish their territory and defend it later. Um, the disadvantage is that especially in Michigan, you may be running into some really crummy weather. So this guy was not entirely happy. But, you know, he made it through the crummy cold weather and uh, he was around pretty much the whole summer. So all's well that ends well. Well, partway through this, I decided that the background and foreground weren't separating enough, so I ended up washing in a couple of layers to darken the snow behind the foreground branches of the bird and the branch. Usually I try not to do a lot of that, but uh, in this case, it just I, I don't think there was enough separation um, initially, so it required kind of knocking that back a little bit, give it a little better depth. As things developed, I wanted to really be careful about controlling the contrast. I mentioned that earlier. And uh, you can see that on the bird and on the stump that, you know, it goes to almost black black. Whereas on the branches behind and in the kind of as it moves into the background, it may be sharp and it may have detail, but it never goes to that, you know, super black um, dark areas. It'll go, you know, dark, but not, you know, completely. And I think that allows you to have a better sense of depth and you're controlling a little bit where the uh, viewer's eye goes because you want to find, you naturally move to the, those high contrast areas. So you, you, there's a little bit of a reward when you uh, peek through and look for the uh, other areas that are uh, a little less uh, contrasty in the background areas. And can work around a bit. Most of the work on this painting was done with the uh, number two round, but there were some little crisping up areas where I'd switch to a 10 or a 5 aught brush. Um, especially you can see around the eye, the nostrils, the edge of the beak, the toes, things like that. And late in the painting I spent a fair amount of time just, you know, adding little darks to adjust the edges of things. So you'd have a lot of detail um, just with a handful of brush strokes. I love the red eye on the uh, towie. They're just such pretty birds. I need to do a painting of one of these guys in their usual kind of summer look with a summer background where they're not as puffed up and looking cold and miserable. But, but that wasn't the subject of this painting. As I went on, I really tried to, you know, add some roundness to the belly of the bird. Initially, it was a little bit flat, and I was trying to have it round out a little bit more so you could kind of just see where it rolled under into that stump. It was a fun painting to work on. darken up a couple of these areas to give a little bit better separation between the bird and the tail and the uh, snow behind it. 
So there it is, a 10 by 7 inch transparent watercolor of a rufous sided towhee, eastern towhee, call it what you want. Um, thanks for watching. If you get a chance, have a peek at the blog or leave a comment.